Hello and welcome back to the shed. In today's video, we've got the boring task of sharpening an auger bit. Hope you enjoy. When it comes to sharpening an auger bit, there's only one tool you really need, and that is an auger file. Now, uh, there's a few places, at least here in Australia, that stock the auger file, and I'm sure there are plenty of places around the world that actually still stock them, because as I understand, they're still in production. If you look at this file, you can see that it has a tapered design, so it goes to a point on each end. This side has filings just on the wide flat piece, and it's got no filing teeth here, so it's safe on that side. On the other end, we have the filing teeth on the edges and not on the main faces. Now, the tapered part is important for when you're going from different size auger bits. So essentially, this has got multiple files built in, so you can do pretty much any size of auger bit. So if you've got a large one like the one we will sharpen today, you've got the flat bit that can get in here, and you can just file with that, and there's no problem. You get to a much smaller one like this, and on the other side, you can use that flat face to get in there on the side and sharpen, and obviously you're not going to rub against anything else. So that's the beauty of this file. It's multiple files with lots of function and really ideal for doing this type of work. I have used other files in the past that had safe edges and I actually damaged one when I was first learning because it wasn't right so then I went out and actually got the correct file and it's just that much easier. So learn from my mistakes and just get yourself one of these files. When it comes to sharpening the auger bit like this we have these two wings here and these wings score the wood as the auger bit pushes in before the main cutter teeth engage. So essentially you have two knives on the side here, so you want them to be nice and sharp. What we have on the inside here is essentially a chisel, so we've got a flat bit on the top, and we have a little bevel on the back edge here, and that's what comes in and removes the material when the auger bit's pulling in. The other important thing that we have here is this lead screw. Now, when you're getting an auger bit, you want to make sure that you have lead screws that aren't damaged, because if that screw is damaged, the auger bit won't work. There's one last fact that you have to remember when you're sharpening an auger bit like that, and is in no circumstance do you ever sharpen at the outside of these wings here. Because the, these are designed to be the exact size of the auger bit, and allow clearance for the rest of the screw to actually run through. So if you file on the outside here, the entire auger bit will bind up in its hole and could snap, and you no longer have the exact size of that particular auger bit. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into the sharpening. So when it comes to sharpening one of these auger bits, I always start on these wings first. So I'm going to take the big wide edge, big flat edge like this, with the cutting files here, Put the safe edge against the auger here, and I'm going to move the auger file through that wing, making sure to get full contact across the whole thing, and ensuring that we have a nice sharp edge right the way through. Because we're looking, we can look for any flat spots on the top here to know whether that's occurred. So we're just working until we can visually see that. Now. You'll probably end up with a little burr on the outside of these, and in normal sharpening we'd remove that burr, but when it comes to the auger bit, because we can't touch the outside of that, that burr will just break off the first time you use the auger bit, so there's no reason to remove that. So now that we've done both of these wings, let's move on to the flat here. Try and keep that flat, at least right on the very cutting edge. Now, what this is the same is, is essentially the back of your chisel, or your plane blade, so you want to make sure that you get a good, good few passes there and that it's flat-ish right to the edge. Now the beauty of this file is also that you can get right up against that lead screw and not damage it, so you can sharpen right the way across here and you've got no problems of hitting anything that you're not trying to sharpen. You don't want to worry that that's going to be polished because it's not going to be polished because we're just using the file, so it's going to be rough, but as long as it's relatively flat right to the edge, that's all that matters. Then we come in from the top, and we're going to sharpen on this angle through here. If you need the extra support, you can rest it like this, and you're just going to run across here, 
And it doesn't actually take that much, especially if it's been one that you're using and you're just resharpening it. As you can see, I've done that in a few passes and that's now sharp. Obviously you'd flip over, you'd do the identical on this side like we did with the other wing. And so now that's sharp, right? The one thing that you've got to watch when you're sharpening along these bevels is the cutting edge comes right in under the bottom of this lead screw. Now this lead screw is a little bit damaged, which you might be able to pick up on the camera here. Just here, there's a little bit of damage to it. That was like that when I got this one, but it doesn't seem to affect the use. But when you're sharpening, you just want to stay over this side of the bevel and not actually come in under this lead screw at all. So you, you're sort of keeping over this side. You can come through on a little bit of an angle, as you can see here. But really, if you have a little bit of damage to a lead screw, you might be able to use a really fine file to correct the thread. But my recommendation would be to just move on if you have a auger bit that has any damage to the lead screw at all and find a new one. They're usually not too expensive and there's plenty of them out there. So you have a lot of choice when it comes to auger bits. But if you are struggling to find them, you might be able to clean the thread out with a little fine file. But I'm not going to show you that because I've not had to do it because I just avoid damaged ones. So obviously now this auger bit is nice and sharp and it's ready for use. So there you have it folks. That's how you sharpen an auger bit. And it really couldn't be easier or quicker. You just need to make sure that you're selecting the right auger bits that have no damage to their lead screw and getting yourself an auger bit file. Now, the auger bit files are not that expensive and are well worth the investment and they allow you to sharpen all the way from your largest auger bit down to the tiniest. So I'd like to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Check out my Facebook and Instagram pages. And if you'd like to support me a little bit further, please consider checking out my Patreon page. And I'd like to put a big thank you out there to my current Patrons, everyone who's subscribed to the channel, and you the viewer for supporting me. Bye for now.